So integra integrated into the timeline is a set of playback controls, so we can push play, and that'll play us through our animation. Um, and then this is the loop button, so if you just want to put it on loop, I think you can just push that and it'll loop certain points. So if I wanted to do the whole thing, I could go all back, all the way back to the first frame of the animation, which is a ways, actually. Um, and so if I want to loop the whole thing, if you want to only loop segments, you can too. Um, but this will just make it play in a loop, basically. So anyway, there's those things. So if you want the animation to proceed at a slower pace, um, you can lengthen the entire tween span between the beginning and end frames. If you want to shorten the animation, you need to decrease the tween, tween span. So we can actually grab the end of the tween span on City. I think I'm still... So if I go all the way here to City, and if I grab the end of this, I think I should be able to... Let's see, move it in. And it's, it says in the book to bring it to frame 60. So it's kind of difficult actually to do, um, especially with my trackpad, but I'll do, I'll do the best I can right now. Um, so one thing I found that helps is if I zoom way out, I can see more of the timeline, and then that way I can hopefully grab the end of this and bring it to 60 frames. So I think I'm on 61. If I want to zoom in now, maybe I can have a little easier time moving it exactly to 60. So it looks like it's on 60 frames now. So I'm going to turn loop off um, and then just do a play or maybe just bring my this thing back all the way to frame one and then we'll just play through. So now it's shortened the amount of time that it takes the cityscape to move. And then it disappears off the timeline altogether. We're actually going to go back to on cityscape and, or on the city layer and bring it to frame 10 if we can. Um, make sure it's highlighted. I guess that helps a little bit. Um, so now it starts on ten, ten, frame 10. Um, so if I bring this all the way to frame one, the playhead, and then push play over here, it, it just goes from 10 to 60 now. On that on that city layer, um, we'll want the last keyframe of this motion tween to hold for the remainder of the animation. So let's make sure we have this um, layer highlighted. So see how it ends at frame um, 60. But we want it to hold there. We want we want it to hold. We don't want it to move like it was before. Um, so we can do we can hold shift, the shift key, and then drag the end of the uh, layer to all the way to the end of the animation, which is frame one ninety one. Which I might actually do this so I can see the entire thing. Um, zoom out a little bit kind of get my arrow going, make sure it's highlighted, make sure this layer is highlighted, and then push shift, and then now drag all the way to frame 191. And so that should make it hold. Um, so it'll move all the way. Oh, well, that didn't work. Okay, so that didn't really work. I want this motion keyframe to be over here on frame 60. So I'll just do a command Z. Um, and then I think we'll click on frame 191. If we can find it. And then we'll just do insert timeline keyframe. And I think that fixed it for us. I'm not sure why it didn't work. Um, the way the book said it should. Because the book made it sound like that should work. Um, I think, anyway. But 
moving on. Now they're um, we're going to move um, the keyframe on 60 to down to 40. So we'll click on that keyframe. A little box should appear, and then we can drag it to frame 40. I'm going to zoom in just a smidge because I accidentally put it on 41. So there we go. There's a so after we move that to frame 40, um, the book kind of goes over some different things, um, span-based versus frame-based selection, and that's on page 207. You might want to just read that over. Um, moving a keyframe versus changing time in between spans, um, that's on kind of covered on 208. And then um, understanding frame rate is on 209. Um, and the speed of your animation is tied to the frame rate of your document. Um, but obviously we're not going to change the frame rate. Um, the frame rate determines how many times on the timeline, um, how many frames on the timeline make up one second of time. Um, the default is 30 frames per second. And the seconds are marked on the timeline. Uh, frame rate is a measure of how smooth an animation appears. The higher the frame rate, the more frames there are um, in each second, so it'll become um, smoother. Animations with a slower frame rate appear choppy because there's fewer frames to show the action. Um, so slow motion videog videography depends on a very high frame rate because it needs to capture all that action that happens really quickly such as like a speeding bullet or falling water droplet. Um, so if you want to modify the overall duration or speed of your animation, don't change the frame rate though. Um, instead, add frames to or delete frames from your timeline. Um, if you want to change the frame rate to keep the overall duration constant, select the Scale Spans option in the Properties panel before you modify the frame rate. So that's something that the book kind of went over. I thought I'd read you that part um because it's a little easier to understand and easier to explain to you guys okay so next up with the city layer we're going to change um basically the opacity so um the cityscape in the beginning will be totally transparent um but the end keyframe here will be opaque so Anna if we Animate will automatically just smoothly um, have it transition from transparent to opaque for us. Um, so we're going to select the city on the in the panel here, the layer there. Um, in the color, we want to make sure that maybe the playhead is over um, frame ten. Make sure this is selected, and then we want to go to the properties panel. And then the color effects. Um, oh, let's see. Here we go. Um, choose the alpha from the menu. So that means transparency, really, is what it means. The alpha channel. Um, and then we're going to change that to zero don't know if I did that right. Well, we'll see. We'll continue on with. Okay, and then, um, so we can still see the blue bounding box. We'll move the playhead to the last uh, keyframe in, in the motion. So the motion stops at 40. So here, we'll, we'll put it on the playhead on 40, and then we'll go to the properties panel again. Um, make sure this is selected. I don't know what happened there. Um, it's under object and then go to alpha again, and then we'll make this a hundred percent. So at that stage, it should become completely opaque. Um, so let's preview the effect by choosing Control Play.
I don't know if I previewed it from the beginning. I don't think I did. Okay, we'll do that again. Control play. Boy, I guess I just didn't notice. Let's try that again. Maybe if I just... Yeah, okay, I can see it when I do this. So it does. And then it stops at 40, stops moving, and then it just is completely opaque for the rest of the time. So that's what we wanted. Okay, next up I think we're going to add a little bit of a blur to some of the actors. Um, so we just need to kind of scroll up to the actors folder. Um, so man and woman are in here. Um, so we want to unlock unlock the um, the woman layer. And I'm going to just highlight it so I'm off of the cityscape. Um, so we're going to move the playhead to the beginning keyframe of the motion tween in the woman layer at frame 23. So I'm just going to grab this, start moving it down. There's frame 23 right there. You can see it right here. Um, select, select the instance of the woman on the stage. So, okay, I'm just going to do this. I think she's selected because I can see that blue box. Um, to select the transparent instance. So she's, she's transparent at, at frame 23. Or click frame 23 in the woman layer. Um, and then click the object tab in the properties panel. And in the properties panel, click the add filter button in the filter section. So right here probably, huh? And then we want to choose blur from the menu. Um, gonna have to scroll down a little bit to show all of that. So this is the blur panel. It looks like anyway. Um, and then it says to link um, these so that it changes them to the same value and we're going to change it from 4 to 20 pixels. So that's going to blur her. Um, both X and Y should be 20. So we can move the playhead now along the entire thing and she's blurry. Um, the whole time, which we're probably going to end up changing that. She's probably just going to come in blurry and then become um, clear at some point. So I think we're going to select frame 140, and maybe that's when she's going to come into focus. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the key on the uh, timeline so that I know I have this frame selected. I can see the little box it says 140 here. That's good. Um, and then choose insert um, keyframe above the timeline. I've never used, here it is, click that. So animate will establish a keyframe at, um, at frame 140. Select frame 160 in the woman layer. Oh, am I in the man layer right now? Dang it. I'll do a command Z. Um, I want to be here. And then insert that keyframe in the right layer there at 140. And then select 160, frame 160, um, in the woman layer. Uh, and insert keyframe here to add another keyframe. And then select the object tab of the properties panel. Um, and then we're going to go into the blur area here. Oops. Oh, what did I just do? Be careful when you're zoom because you can e easily change things. I, um, so we want to make the blur zero now. So zero. And since they're linked, both should become zero. Basically what that did, I'm, I'm all the way back to the beginning of the animation here, but, um, on that woman layer, she starts to, she's blurry. And she starts to come in 